Is anyone here taking physics in state or no? All right. Good. You all the better. But if you go to take a physics class, they don't say, let's study like the properties of this eraser when it does that. Right? They don't do that. What they do is they say, imagine a perfectly spherical ball with no friction at all running down a perfectly smooth ramp. Right? And so they say, okay, here's the ramp and it's supported here. And you take a ball that weighs, you know, five kilos exactly, and then you roll it, and you see how fast it, it how long it takes to get to this point. And there's no real ball there, right? Nobody says, so nobody says, wait, 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 what color was that ball again? Wait, did you get it on Amazon, or did you order it, <laughs> or did you go to uh, uh, sports experts and buy that ball? Uh, does it have any of the odor of the graduate student technician who handled it? Does it smell like his hands? Uh, uh, what was the gender of the delivery truck driver who brought it? No, right? So you know that there's no actual ball and that the, this is a situation that, you know, there always was a driver, there always is a graduate student, there's always a ramp. Nobody says, is this towards the east and this towards the west or north and south? There are things that you know in physics, you kind of, you accept that you got to do idealizations, right? And it's not really about particular balls. It's about it's about the ideal uh, situations where you've abstracted all kinds of irrelevancies away. So that's the idea. That's what we're going to do in phonology. We're going to have like you know pairs like you know pak, paga, pak, paka, and this is going to be like your singular, plural, and this is going to be cat and dog. Okay? And I made all of this up. Once in a while, there's some real language stuff, but I made them all up. And so the point is, we don't really care about any phonological facts. Like, we don't care that in Swahili, uh, the word for child is watoto, and the word for children is untoto. Like, who cares? Who cares that there's prefix for singular and a prefix for plural? We don't care about facts. We care about how we can reason about patterns of data. And so we've got to start with simple stuff. And so that's why we're going to be using toy language or toy data sets and, uh, and not worry about it. So some people, somebody asked me in my other class, I think, how many languages I speak. And partly because I'm lazy and partly because just to justify, I mean, I, I speak one language. I, I speak English. I mean, there's a few I'm kind of bad at, but let's say one. And the problem is uh, in linguistics, there's a lot of, there's too many people who like languages too much. Right? And so they kind of, they like language trivia, they like to talk about, you know, how you say this and that language, this and the other language. That's all fine for fun, but it doesn't help you do good science. And so we need to do, we, we're going to use, we're going to like counter, counteract this ill effect of all those gifted polyglots that I'm jealous of. I wish I could be like them. We're going to counteract it by using toy, toy data sets like this. So they're really boring and they're really simple. And that's going to help you with your learning logic. Right? If we just throw a, you know, threw a bunch of a uh, list of a hundred words at you from some language with all kinds of things going on, you would get lost. So we're doing this to help you to simplify things. Okay.